Hi and welcome to Lesson 17 Part 2 and this is where GIS begins to get more exciting and where all that time spent learning the basics really pays off. In today's lesson we're going to look at bringing in free name data, so free place data from the internet. We're going to look at how we can use our first geoprocessing tool, so we're going to use the clip tool and we're going to look at filtering data in order to decrease the amount of data we've got. Um, please remember to keep liking, subscribing and most importantly sharing these videos so that we can reach as many other people like you during the coronavirus. The place data for today's lesson can be found at www.dmad.org.tr forward slash QGIS hyphen lesson hyphen 17 hyphen part 2. Okay, so now that we've got our dolphin data loaded in, what might be really useful is to be able to make reference to some places on the map. At the moment, we only have our points and our countries. So we can tell that there's some in the north and we can tell there's clusters in the south, but we can't tell, we can't say specifically, oh, there's a, a cluster next to where, wherever the nearest city is to this, or likewise with this one. And fortunately for us, rather than having to create each of these cities uh, in GIS, there's a lot of free resources online. Um, one of the ones that we're going to use today is a website called mapcruising.com. Um, they've got an awful lot of free stuff on there, um, especially we're going to be using the European one, but they've got a lot for the US as well. Um, and so I'm just going to bring that file in now in the same way. Um, but this is for all of Europe and you'll find that quite often our data is for all of Europe or it's for all of the world and obviously that's far too much data for us to be dealing with um, especially if you have a slower computer it can take forever um, so you can see we've got an awful lot of places here I mean Italy's virtually identifiable as a country uh, likewise with Sicily um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a really useful function called clip in QGIS. So we're just going to go up to vector, we're going to go to geoprocessing geo tools and then go to clip. Uh, the input layer that's already selected for us is places. The overlay layer we're going to use is the Eastern Adriatic. So we're only going to use the countries that we selected last time and then it's always useful to save it to a file so we've got it again um, and I'm just going to call it Eastad for Eastern Adriatic Places and then I can just run that it might take a little while especially if you've got a bit of an older computer um, but what this is going to do is it's going to remove everything from outside of the polygons so we're only going to be left with our our points that were in our polygons okay so we're at 25 percent shouldn't take too long from this point um, but yeah this is a really useful resource and okay we've popped up and we get a little notification down here that says it's executed clip and what we can do now is remove places because we've got our Eastern Adriatic places. So we can remove this layer and you'll see that we're just left with so much less data now. Okay. But even though this is far too much data for our map, you can see that we've got, even within Montenegro, we've really got a lot of points, um, especially around the coast. And it's sort of, overshadows some of our dolphin data either even so what we're going to do is we're going to just go to properties so right click go to properties go to symbology and like we had before we're going to categorize this the value we're going to categorize by is type so if we do that and then click classify we'll see that we've got a couple of extra options we're only going to be interested in, uh, we're not interested in country or airport or even hamlet or island. So we're going to remove all of these just by 
pressing control whilst we click and we're just going to leave cities, towns and villages and see how we look. So once these are all highlighted, the things we're not interested in, we can just press the minus button uh, and that will leave us with towns and villages. So we can press apply and see how it looks. Okay, so we've probably even now got a couple too many. I'm going to remove that as well because it's not too useful to our map. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove villages as well and just press apply. And you'll see that we're now left with some far more sensible units. And I'm going to make the remaining two the same colour. So they're going to be dot green and they're going to be size two. Actually dot blue, sorry. Dot blue and size two. And we're going to do the same for the towns. Dot blue and size two. Okay. Press apply, press OK, and you'll see that we've got our towns, and it's now easier to reference them to a point. Um, what we don't have still are any labels, so in the same way we can just right click, go to properties, and we're just going to turn these labels on. Um, so the next one down, this ABC is the label one, and we click that, go to single labels. We're obviously going to label by name, so press apply. Might take a couple of seconds, and we're just going to go into buffer in case we have any lines. By now, you probably know that I like the 0.8 buffer, I find the one buffer a bit big sometimes. So just go to that and then click apply, and it just means wherever we've got crossing lines, um, our text is going to be a little bit off that. So now you can say that. Near to Herzog Navy, we've got a lot of dolphins as we have near Bar and Olsen. And that just makes it a lot easier, especially if we're talking in the journal, to be able to come in and look at that. And um, someone can make quite easy deductions from our text by looking at our map and vice versa. So just really easy. Um, in the next part of the lesson, we're going to look at changing the symbology and then creating different maps. Um, alongside each other to show different parts of the symbology.